It is a cloudy, rainy day. Definitely feeling like fall today. And I am going to make up some freezer meals for when the baby comes. I am about due at this point when this video comes out and I want there to be something in the freezer that my family can easily throw into an instant pot or something like that so that we just have some more to rely on. I started this process by getting beans soaking last night. So I put black beans, water, and apple cider vinegar into a large pot overnight to soak them. This helps to break down some of the not so digestible parts of beans. It also makes the cooking time go a little bit faster. I also got some bone broth going. Now recently I placed a really big fed from the farm order. They are a local farm to me that does all natural, organic, very sustainable practices with their animals. And they sell chicken shells, which is basically just once they take all of the meat off of the bones to sell like chicken breasts or other cuts, you can just buy what is mostly bone. They also sell necks and feet. So I got going in my Instant Pot some shells, necks, feet. This also helps them it to gel a little bit better. And then I added some onions, carrots, celery, bay leaves. So I strained off the bone broth. I rinsed the beans that were soaking. I have the beans cooking, bunch of bone broth. I assembled all of my ingredients. Now the key with a meal planning day like this is just to really prepare your recipes so that you have everything on hand, you can clear your schedule and make sure that you have plenty of time to get it all done. Now my goal this time is different than with Daniel. Whenever I shared a meal prep video before I had Daniel last year, you guys commented that it looked like an exhausting day. It really was because I chose some things that weren't exactly easy. So I made like a bunch of uh, breakfast sandwiches and that's great, that's really delicious. Sourdough English muffin breakfast sandwiches are wonderful, but in all reality, my family can cook eggs just fine. They don't really have to have a bread component to it. That isn't something that I really need to prep. What I'm hoping for with this is just some backup stuff because my kids can pretty much at this point, now not really as much with Daniel, but the older two kids can handle cooking in the kitchen, but we'll still wanna get homeschool done. There'll still be times whenever that'll be really hard to do. And so I was thinking really easy, things that throw together, go in a Ziploc, and then can be thrown into an Instant Pot. I'm gonna try to get as many meals made in as little time as possible today without exhausting myself. That is the goal. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a different strategy. With the last one, I did a lot of things that were pre-cooked. I am gonna do one thing like that, but for the most part, it's gonna be thrown into a Ziploc, frozen with instructions on it, and then it'll cook in the Instant Pot whenever they go to use it. So it should be a quick assembly. The first thing I'm gonna make is a cilantro lime chicken. Now this can be served with rice, which my older kids know just how to make, so that'll be a great meal. Also maybe some sauerkraut and avocado, which I'll have in the refrigerator already. I'm gonna do a chicken wild rice soup, a chili, and then I'm gonna make up a couple of my chicken pot pies. I am gonna cook the filling for that first and make the pie crust so that they just have to be popped into the oven. Now I will have a corresponding blog post with today's meal prep video, so you'll be able to find all four recipes, all of the ingredients, and some tips on prepping for your meal prep day if you do wanna fill your freezer with these exact same things. So you can check that out at farmhousemoon.com. I will also leave a link down in the description box below. I'm going to combine the juice of four limes, a tablespoon of honey, and two cups of my homemade bone broth. Now this would be a little bit tricky if I'd made the bone broth so far ahead of time that it was gelled up in the fridge, but it is still warm, so it won't actually be super gelled.
All right, I added one diced onion. I'm going to add five cloves of minced garlic. a cup of chopped cilantro. I'm totally just gonna estimate here. I don't think you can really do too much cilantro, so. <laughs> Tablespoon of cumin. And two teaspoons of chili powder. do like a whole bag of this frozen sweet corn. And then I need to check my beans to see if they are done. I need to add black beans to this. They are done enough, especially because this is going to get cooked again because it will have raw chicken in it. I'm gonna do about three cups of black beans. I'm gonna throw some salt in here. Now, I have unsalted beans, unsalted broth. I'm gonna get a lot of it. Whereas, if you're making this recipe and you're using like a salted broth or if canned black beans, which you can totally do, you might not want to add as much salt as I did. Now they can always add more salt later. All right, I also, when I ordered from my Fed From The Farm, which I will leave a link down to them in the description box below. I know many of you have ordered from them. But I also ordered a bunch of chicken breasts and chicken tenderloins. Now, I do like to cook um, whole chickens, but again, sometimes you want something super easy. And chicken breasts and tenderloins are no question, very easy. I can just throw them right in. I am gonna give them a little rinse and then throw them in with my beans, corn, marinade, veggie mixture. All right, now I'm just gonna throw in a bit more salt and put this in a couple of Ziplocs with Sharpie instructions. Now I did three packs of chicken. So this should, if served with rice and guacamole, maybe some chips. This should possibly work for two meals. If not, they can heat up more than one. I do think the key here is going to be the instructions so that my family can reach in and then know what's going on without having to come ask me, which it's really not a big deal, especially since we moved downstairs. I will now be in the action through postpartum. I felt like last time with Daniel, I was upstairs and I didn't really wanna take the stairs much while I was recovering. So I was just kinda of out of the action and now I'm gonna be very much in it so people can come cuddle with me and baby and ask me lots of questions about the food. But nonetheless, I think it'd be good for everybody if I write instructions on this. I decided once packaging this all up that this will definitely need to both be heated up at the same time. So I'm gonna see if I can actually do this again with the amount of stuff that I have because I think my family is really gonna like this. So I'd like to have at least four bags for two meals in the freezer.
apparently only had one bag of corn, thought I had more. So Miggy, I'm just going to throw a bell pepper in with this. I think that'll just be a good little additional vegetable to do. For the chicken and wild rice soup, I added to a large bowl shredded carrots, minced garlic, diced onion, diced celery, broth, chicken breasts, uncooked wild rice, salt, pepper, dried celery, rosemary, thyme, some good seasonings. I actually did this recipe one and a half times, so I didn't have enough to fit it all in my bowl. So I removed the chicken breasts, added those to the bag so that each bag had an equal number, and then just divvied out the rest of the stuff into the bags. I ended up coming up with two good sized bags of this soup. Now, with this one, there are a few instructions that you actually want to save for cooking day. So you will cook this for 35 minutes in the Instant Pot. Now you have two options. You can either add a little bit of liquid or you can just put it on the saute function and let a little bit of the liquid melt out whenever you're cooking this from frozen. Also, you could let it thaw and then just cook it in a large soup pot. You'd have to cook it for a pretty good while in order to let the chicken and the wild rice cook. Then you want to combine a quarter cup of flour, a quarter cup of butter, stir it together to make a roux, add that to thicken the soup, and then add in about two and a half cups of cream or half and half to make it nice and creamy. I also made a note to add more salt to taste. Now I thought about writing this, actually I tried writing all of this on one of the bags with a Sharpie. Then I decided just to print it off. So again, this will be on the blog if you want to also print off so you can just tape it to the front so that this makes it really easy for whoever is preparing it. I think that's probably a better option for something with this many instructions than going the Sharpie route. All right, next up I'm gonna get some chili going. So I'm going to brown the beef first. Now I saw options online where some people actually don't even do that first. They just kind of break it up and throw it in the bag. Personally, I think it would just taste better if the meat was browned first. So I'm gonna brown up two pounds of ground beef, then I'm gonna add to a bag two diced onions, two diced bell peppers, six garlic cloves minced, four cups of my black beans. I will just throw in whatever is left at this point. A large can of diced tomatoes, a can of tomato paste, a couple tablespoons of chili powder and cumin, two cups of broth and a couple teaspoons of salt. I've run out of time, the kids are, we're, we're done. So for the final meal, I made my chicken pot pie filling, which is over on the farmhouseonbean.com blog. I actually decided as I was making this that I'm gonna make you guys a little freezer meal guide. It'll be a printable thing that you can just grab. I'll leave it down in the description box below so you can download it. And if you wanna do this exact meal planning day, all the recipes will be in one place, the directions, so that you can knock this out as well. But for the chicken pot pie filling, essentially it just was veggies diced. I did potatoes, carrots. I actually ran out of onions, but that's okay. Peas, garlic, and then I added some butter and flour, homemade bone broth, cream. I actually made a chicken in the Instant Pot. Whenever I was about halfway through this meal prep day, I realized that I wanted to make more of each of the things so I didn't have enough chicken to also do it for the pot pie. So I just grabbed a frozen chicken out of the freezer, put it in the Instant Pot while I was working on other things, and then that way it cooked it. I took it off the bone and added it to my chicken pot pie. I doubled the recipe, so I ended up getting enough to make three pot pies for the freezer and then one for dinner tonight. Now for the pot pies in the freezer, I did all of my little tin either cake pans or pie pans, so that way you could freeze okay, covered it with foil, and then I made one for tonight just in my normal pie dish. I made my einkorn pie crust. I actually had to triple the recipe to have enough pie crust for all of this, and then just froze it.
Now let me tell you what we got. In the freezer, I got about two or three bags of each thing plus three pot pies. So depending on how much we need, like we might need a pot pie and a half for each meal. Uh, I think I probably got at least a week of dinners out of this, so I feel a lot better. It was easy to throw together. I like that a lot of this stuff wasn't a huge time commitment whenever I didn't have to cook everything. The pot pies are a bigger time commitment, but they're also my family's favorite thing. We love them so much, so I think having something in there that's really comforting will be great. All right, make sure to grab your freezer meal guide. You can get that at bit.ly forward slash farmhouse freezer meals. I will also leave a link down in the description box below. There will also be a corresponding blog post for this, so if you don't wanna print that out, you can still go over to the blog, get all the recipes, and do a meal planning day like that. I just thought that some people do like having that printable guide that they can just print off, have in the kitchen, whenever they're doing something like this. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.